Hi there, this video is a, is a description of how you can build oak stair treads from rough lumber, mill it down, cut it, glue it in strips, and uh, clamp it, and then cut it to fit for oak stair treads and risers. So I have a four level split house, and I had three sets of stairs that had uh, carpeting over the stairs. I took the carpeting off and found spruce boards underneath. The spruce boards were all two by six, and uh, they were strong, but they didn't look, uh, they didn't match the rest of the oak railing and the oak flooring I had in the house, so I wanted to reface them with oak. Fortunately, it looks like the stairs in the beginning were designed to be refaced with something because the measurements of the rise and the run work out perfectly if I was to add a one inch tread on every one of the treads that is already there. So I did not have to recalculate stringers or anything like that. So I bought rough cut oak boards from a mill. So these were a tree and then the guy drove them through a big saw, cut them in about one, they're just a little over an inch thick, and then he kiln dried them. And so that uh, during that drying process, they became stable and they won't warp as much. But uh, the, the, the this is certainly a rough surface and I did not want the rustic look. I wanted the smooth surface look like that. So I ran them all through a thickness planer and uh, and I started, just, well you just skim the surface. Uh, each time you run the board through the thickness planer, you, you just take a little bit off, so it may take several runs of a board through a planer. So what I did was I ran it through on one side a couple of times until I got it more or less flat. It wasn't necessarily smooth everywhere, but it was flat. And then I flip it over, and then I run it through the other side until it was flat. And then I'd pick one side, which was going to be my best side, and I'd mark on it top or, you know, I'd identify it as the top, and then I would plane that good side until it looked very, very good. Um, and then I didn't want the stair treads to cup. Uh, cupping of a stair tread means it will kind of bend or bow as it further cures within your home and as the season changes. And I had initially hoped I would get uh, boards that were wide enough so that I could have one board per stair tread but uh, I've learned that that's probably not the best way to do it. So what I ended up doing was ripping the boards after I had planed them, ripping them in two to three inch strips. And so I've got two to three inch strips by the width of my stair tread. And then you can see the grains have to alternate. So this is kind of a bad example. I got two together there, but we look here. Grain goes this way, grain goes this way, grain goes this way grain goes this way, grain goes this way, and so if you alternate the grains from one board to the next, that prevents warping on a wide scale. This board itself may warp over the two inches, but it's only two inches wide, so it can't warp very much, and this board, and this board, and this board, they all might warp a little bit, but it's, it's more, it'll be more of a ripple instead of a big cup like that. So I would cut these all in strips, and then the table saw didn't really give a perfect right angle edge, so I'd run them all through a joiner. And uh, this is an extremely accurate way to get a 90 degree edge right there. So I set this with a, with a, a good square and checked it a couple of times and made sure it was very, very accurate. So it is 90 degrees. And now when I ran my strips through, I would push them up against that fence right there and run them through this joiner, and there's a blade that spins around in there. There's the guard for it. I'd run it through until I would have a consistent sound of the blade, because if it would go, if it would, if it would make noise from here to here, but then no noise, and then more noise from here to here, I knew that there was a high spot in the middle of the board. So you keep running it through the joiner, which is designed to, to take down an edge, just shaving it ever so slightly each time, and now you have a 90 degree edge on this surface. Do the same thing with the other surface, and you do that with every one of your strips, and then lay them out on a big table. And my workbench is my table saw, so I didn't want to get glue over it. So every time I would glue these up, I would put newspaper on them. And uh, so I would have this big table, uh, put a row of glue between each board, glue them together, clamp them, and uh, let them harden. And that's what you're looking at right here. I glue them in 25-inch strips, or 25-inch wide sections, approximately. And then uh, I would cut them after they're cured, I would cut them in 10-inch uh, uh, widths 
and um, they would become my stair treads, and if I had five inches left over, well, I just glue that onto the next batch of boards that I ripped down. So now, at that stage, I would have had 10 inch wide boards, and they're, they're all smooth if you look at a two inch surface, but if you look at them together, there's a glue line, and maybe I didn't have them quite you know, lined up like this way, and so I would run just the tread through the planer, good side up, and then, uh, and then I'd have a smooth tread, and then I would run it bad side up just to take the high parts of the, the glue off it. So then I would have my treads, and I'll take you in the house now to show you some of the finished, the finished treads. Uh, I also wanted to glue a stair nosing. Hello. I also wanted to glue a stair nosing, or a bull nosing they call it, over, there we go, over the face of the tread. So here's the finished product, and it's smooth, smooth. I will hit it with the sander, but it is very, very smooth. Even if I didn't bother, it's still good enough just from going through the thickness planer. So then I've got a 10 inch tread, and in the front of it I've glued a 1 and 3 quarter inch uh, strip, hardwood strip on the front, and I'm going to route the top surface and the bottom surface, and that is how I made each of the treads. And this is what they look like. They're just set in place now. They're not actually, not actually glued down, and they're not uh, varnished either, because I'm going to do that. I'm going to varnish them before I glue them down. But anyway, that's how they look, and uh, it's quite a task to do any stairs that are custom. So if you look at these ones, there's a great way looking down the stairs to see how none of them have any right angles, and none of the angles are the same as any others. And so cutting all the treads, which you do not see here, this is the original stairs, uh, there are all the treads, I already cut the fit. It's quite a task. Now, to measure the stair tread, to cut it, you have two ways you can do it. You cannot rely on the wall and the riser and the tread all being 90 degrees because they're almost they almost never are, even in a new place apparently. So take a carpenter's adjustable square here, measure it out, and then you can mark that angle on your board, okay? And then measure from this corner to that corner, the opposite corner of the of the tread and determine a number of inches there and then take the angle here and now you can mark the opposite angle on your board and you know how, dif how far apart they are so if you cut them to fit they'll slide right in the other trick that I've seen used is you can make a an adjustable template gauge which I, I took the time to make it but I never did use it not once because the other method I just showed you was so easy but uh, it's basically it's just a few pieces of scrap plywood and I've got a bolt there and it's got a hinge that's, that acts as a hinge, that bolt and so you slide this surface up against the back of your riser and you slide this surface up against the side of the wall and then tighten the wing nut down and this is your exact angle and you can do the same thing on the other side as well so just to make sure that this fit as flush as possible before, I used, uh, I don't know what the name of the carriage bolt maybe, it's got a flush head, there's no, you can't put a wrench on the head of that bolt. So it's kind of small and portable and you know you can adjust it as necessary for your stair treads. So there's another idea for you. And uh, I think that's all I've got for you, maybe I'll show a video of the finished product. Okay, bye bye.